microinjection of Xenopus lavus oocytes followed by thin sectioning electron microscopy is an excellent system for studying nucleocytoplasmic transport. In this experiment, oocytes are defoliculated with collagenase, and stage 6 oocytes are selected and placed in a multi-well dish. The oocytes are then microinjected with a nuclear import substrate. After incubation of the oocytes at room temperature to allow the substrate to enter the nucleus, the oocytes are fixed and dissected. The dissected oocytes are embedded in low melting agarose, fixed again with osmium tetroxide, dehydrated, and embedded in an epoxy resin. The epoxy embedded samples are sectioned with an ultra microtome and the sections are placed on a copper EM specimen grid. After staining, the sections are visualized under a transmission electron microscope. Hi, I'm Sarah Cohen from the laboratory of Dr. Nelly Pante in the Department of Zoology at the University of British Columbia. I'm Shelley Ao, also from the Pante Lab. Today we will show you a procedure for microinjection of Xenopus lavis oocytes. We use this procedure in our laboratory to study nuclear import of cargo, such as viruses. So let's get started. To get started with the experiment, place a small piece, about 2 centimeters, of Xenopus lavis ovary into a 50 milliliter conical tube containing 20 milliliters of collagenase solution. Collagenase removes the follicle cells which surround the oocytes. Then place the tube on a shaker platform and rock it gently at 100 RPM for 30 minutes. This time varies with different lots of collagenase, so after one hour, take a small sample of the oocytes and examine them under a dissecting microscope. Properly defoliculated oocytes should be well separated from one another. Insert a glass needle into an oocyte to see that it slides in easily. If the oocytes are not sufficiently defoliculated, leave them in the collagenase solution and check again every five minutes. Once the oocytes are sufficiently defoliculated, wash them three times with modified bar saline and transfer them to a 100 mm petri dish containing MBS plus 1% penicillin streptomycin. Using a dissecting microscope, select mature stage six oocytes for microinjection. These oocytes are large, with good contrast between the black animal hemisphere and the creamy colored vegetal hemisphere. Transfer the mature stage 6 oocytes into a multi-well dish. To do this, use a 200 microliter pipetter with a pipette tip that has been cut at the end to allow undisrupted suction of the oocytes and carefully transfer the oocytes into the multi-well. We use a Nunk microwell dish with a 10 microliter well volume. The oocytes are now ready to be microinjected. Prepare the import substrate to be microinjected by adding 1 microliter of 1% bromphenol blue to 10 microliters of substrate. The bromphenol blue dye adds the visualization of the microinjection. Then place a small strip of parafilm on a 100 mm diameter petri dish and dispense a 5 microliter drop of the injection solution on the parafilm strip. Next obtain an injection needle by pulling a 6.6 .6 microliter Drummond micropipette with the inject plasmatic puller. Calibrate the injection needle by making dot marks on the needle every 0.5 millimeters, which corresponds to a volume of 50 nanoliters. Set the microinjector to aspiration mode and fill the needle with injection solution. For cytoplasmic injection, insert the tip of the needle into an oocyte in the vegetal hemisphere, very close to the animal hemisphere, at an approximately 45 degree angle. Then turn the microinjector setting to microinject and microinject each oocyte with 50 nanoliters of import substrate. Keep your eye on the dot marks on the needle to monitor the amount of substrate that has been injected. When the injections are complete, transfer the oocytes to a 35 mm petri dish filled with MBS. Incubate the oocytes at room temperature for the desired amount of time. 
choose time points that allow observation of the import substrate associated with nuclear pore complexes, or NPCs. We typically use time points between 10 and 30 minutes for proteins and viruses that are actively transported towards the NPC. These time points also depend on the site of injection and the size of the protein or virus. When the incubation is complete, transfer the oocytes to a 4 milliliter glass vial containing 2% glutaraldehyde in MBS and fix overnight at 4 degrees Celsius. The next day, wash the oocytes three times with MBS. We are now ready to dissect the oocytes. Transfer the oocytes to a small petri dish filled with low salt buffer. Using a dissecting microscope and dissecting tweezers, remove the vegetal pole from each oocyte. It is useful to stabilize the oocyte with one pair of tweezers, while the other pair is used like scissors to remove the vegetal pole. This dissection step makes it much easier to find the nucleus when trimming and sectioning the samples for electron microscopy. At this point, the presence of a blue tinge in the cytosol indicates a successful microinjection. Discard oocytes that were not microinjected successfully. Next, fix the dissected oocytes again with 2% glutaraldehyde in LSB for one hour at room temperature. After fixation, wash the dissected oocytes three times with LSB. Once the oocytes are washed, we are ready to prepare the injected oocytes for embedding and thin sectioning EM. Transfer the dissected oocytes to a depression slide. Aspirate as much of the liquid as possible, and then, acting quickly so that they do not dry out, cover the dissected oocytes with 2% low-melting agarose. While the agarose is still soft, use a pipette tip to separate the oocytes from each other, and to ensure that each oocyte is either face up or down, but not sideways. Allow the agarose to solidify for about 10 minutes. Once the agarose solidifies, use a razor blade to cut the agarose into small pieces, each containing one dissected oocyte. Then place the agarose embedded oocytes in a 4 milliliter glass vial. And using a rotary mixer, Post fix them with 1% osmium tetroxide in LSB for one hour at room temperature. After fixing for one hour, wash the sample three times in LSB. If necessary, store the sample at four degrees Celsius overnight and continue the protocol the next day. Sequentially dehydrate the samples in 50%, 70%, and 90% ethanol for 20 minutes each. Then dehydrate two times in 100% ethanol for 15 minutes each. Finally, dehydrate the samples with 100% acetone for 15 minutes. After the dehydration steps are complete, infiltrate the samples with a one-to-one -one mixture of EPON, FLUCA, and acetone for one hour, followed by infiltration with a two-to-one mixture of EPON and acetone for two hours and finally, in pure EPON for at least six hours. When the final infiltration step is complete, place the samples in flat embedding molds filled with fresh, pure EPON. Orient the oocytes so that the side of the nucleus closer to the injection site will be sectioned first. In this case, the side of the oocytes that has been dissected will be sectioned first. This step optimizes the chance of visualizing import of the chosen substrate. Once the oocytes are properly oriented, polymerize the EPON for two days at 60 degrees Celsius. After the polymerization step, obtain 50 nanometer thick sections of the epoxy embedded samples using an ultramicrotome. Collect the sections on a copper EM specimen grid. Stain the samples and visualize them under a transmission electron microscope. 
If the protocol has been successful, then the nuclear envelope and NPCs should be clearly visible in EM micrographs. Depending on the substrate injected and the amount of time between injection and fixation, the substrate should be visible at the cytoplasmic face of the NPC, in the NPC, or at the nuclear face of the NPC. This representative result shows a nuclear envelope cross-section with adjacent cytoplasm and nucleus from a Xenopus oocyte that has been injected with capsids of the baculovirus ACMNPV. Arrowheads point to NPCs and a capsid docking at the cytoplasmic face of an NPC is indicated by a white arrow. In contrast, this figure shows a nuclear envelope cross-section with adjacent cytoplasm and nucleus from a Xenopus oocyte that has been injected with the parvovirus of mice. Using this technique, we have found that MVM induces disruptions of the nuclear envelope. Brackets indicate breaks in the nuclear envelope, arrowheads point to NPCs, and putative MVM capsids associated with the nuclear envelope are indicated by white arrows. We've just shown you how to microinject and dissect Xenopus levis oocytes. When doing this procedure, it's important to remember that different lots of collagenase vary, so test your collagenase carefully to determine the optimal time for defolliculation. Also, after the defolliculation and MBS washing step, the oocytes may be stored at 4 degrees Celsius for up to one week prior to microinjection. Lastly, always keep your glutaraldehyde on ice and never let the oocytes dry out. They should be fully submerged during all the dehydration and infiltration steps. So that's it. Thanks for watching and good luck with your experiments.